What's up everybody, Derek Ting here. So today we're gonna to talk about the Blackmagic Pocket 6K cinema camera. All right, so I've been testing the camera um, and it's very, very similar to the 4K cinema camera. It looks the same in terms of the number of ports. It's, it's pretty much the same screen. Everything uh, is mostly the same, except for two main things which I think distinguish it from. Um, from each other. So one is that it's the 6K resolution and the other is the ability to mount EF lenses. It's an EF Canon uh, mount um, system so uh, it's different in the fact that the 4K does. Um, it's a micro four thirds mount and then if you want to use EF lenses from Canon then you need to add an adapter or if you want to try other types of lenses then you need an adapter. Um, so that's gonna uh, factor into your consideration, especially because the price is different. Um, this one's around 2,400-ish dollars, and then the um, and then the 4K is around 1,300 dollars. So there's a there's a price difference. But if you have Canon lenses, then um, you know you're gonna have to get the uh, the speed booster. From Metabones, and that's going to cost you around 650. Um, and then on top of the fact you're not getting um, the 6K resolution. So, um, you know, uh, I think firstly, what's exciting is a lot of people do have Canon lenses, or they're highly available. Also, Sig lenses are great. So, um, you know, having that direct mount makes it easier. Obviously, the the mount looks different, and it's just kind of protruding. But uh, that that being said, that doesn't matter because you know the ability to quickly add um, a Canon lens, lens is uh, really, really important. So here's the thing. Um, if you already have the Canon system or you have access to it, you have friends that have the Canon, which is very common, um, then um, then it, it puts you in a position that, um, you know, it may be just to your benefit to um, get, the, get the 6K, especially if you're deciding between the two. If you are of the Micro Four Thirds arena and you have Micro Four Thirds lenses, then um, I would say then you're automatically looking at the 4K, All right? So the other thing that I think I'm super excited about is the 6K resolution, which I talked about. And uh, so I did uh, different tests on the Blackmagic just in terms of being able to zoom in. So um, I took, uh, you know, just a standard image and then zoomed in to see what kind of, um, you know, if I could zoom in easier because normally in films, sometimes you, you know, don't, you don't get the, the right crop or you want a different angle, let's just say, or a different shot if you want to zoom in. And, um, you know, this, that 6K resolution can save you um, from not having that, that shot to turn to. Um, so uh, I think the 6K is very exciting, so I wanted to put it to the test. Now, you know, I've, I've especially um, that HD was actually, um, you know, just uh, it's enough. And in terms of YouTube, mostly HD, which is 1920 by 1080, is pretty much enough. I mean, I'm shooting using my Canon EOS R on uh, HD because just because I don't want to deal with the file sizes and, you know, the picture looks great. And for you to watch this on, um, you know, on your tablet or your phone, it's not going to make that much of a difference if it's in 4K. Um, but if you're bumping up to your short film level or you're bumping up to um, you know feature film lengths, then absolutely nowadays uh, I would say you know within the last couple of years 4K is uh, really important that you're shooting on. But even then, um, HD is still acceptable. It's just that you know you're figuring you know in the next couple of years 4K is just going to be ubiquitous and uh, you know you'll be forced to shoot in um, 4K. Um, rewind to my first film. We shot um, Super Capitalist. We shot that in 4K, and that was using the Red MX sensor. And uh, honestly, um, we mixed in, um, you know, Canon 5D Mark III uh, footage. I I specifically had to do some reshoots to fill in some story gaps, and uh, that blended nicely. And that was in HD. Um, and then when we went to theatrical, um, the DCP is around. HD, it's actually like 2048 versus 1920. And so, so having shot 4K raw, it didn't even really make that much of a difference. Here's, here's another thing that I think though that Blackmagic is doing really well is um, the compression. 
So there's now Black Magic Raw, which is not a pure raw, but it's its own version, like an Apple ProRes. And they have um, different compression levels. So there's like three to one, there's five to one, eight to one. There's even a Q0 and a Q5. And I've tested these and I'm putting these online with you to take a look at the difference. Um, so let's take a look at those. Okay. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm only applying a 3D LUT, which is their, you know, their standard Blackmagic uh, 4K to extended video um, 3D LUT. I am not coloring this. I'm not adding any contrast. I want you to see it as they intended it, and you can be the judge. But um, I do want to note that there was a little bit of a, there's like a little sticker on the, uh, the car, and it was reflecting, and I think, like, if I even just, like, touched, you know, when I touched the record button, then my tripod moved a little bit. And then uh, there's a little like wiggle back and forth. So you're gonna see like reflection from the window being captured in that little mini, um, on that little mini sticker. This is not Moray, it's not Moray. So um, I thought that was pretty amazing actually in terms of its ability to capture that type of detail. So um, that is, uh, yeah, so just watch out for that. But you can look at the writing and the little details on those, um, on those little cars and the different types of colors and then you can make the decision. Now, um, I think overall for me, it looked like eight to one is pretty good. If you're looking for um, different, uh, if you're looking to optimize the file storage, because when you get down to three to one, then like you really don't have much time to record. And you know, you're just gonna be recording uh, terabytes and terabytes. And I did find even using, um, you know, USB-C NVMe drive, um, that there were drop frames. So at the three to one level, you are, um, uh, you know, you're dropping frames. The Q0, Q5, I'll be honest, I, I've never shot in that format, so I'm not as familiar with it. Um, I, you know, I think you can choose, you know, what format you want and how much file storage you want to take on when you're shooting these things. So, um, you know, but I'm, I'm putting these tests up there for you to see the 6K. Now, what I'm doing is I'm zooming in 200%. Um, but what that means is, um, you know, that's 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 if you're shooting in 8K. So honestly, like I'm zooming in more, um, just for you to see like where you know wh when the image degrades. But um, technically, you should only be able to zoom into 150% if you're on a 4K monitor. Does that make sense? I hope it does. Um, if it doesn't, leave me a comment below. Um, but uh, so I think the optimal is eight to one. Uh, and obviously if you're zooming in at 150%, then you're gonna be able to get the same type of 4K image if you're just moving around. You're probably, you, you know, you like 99% of the time you're gonna be outputting in 4K and uh, having that 6K is gonna allow you to move around on the screen and zoom in here and there, which is pretty awesome. So, I mean, you know, look at this, this is pretty much you know, if this were 6K, this would be 4K. You know, and you're able to go in a little bit further. Um, and that may, may, might make all the difference in your film so that you don't have that kind of graininess. Normally you can only zoom in maybe five to 10% on, uh, on a 4K. So, um, okay. And some weaknesses, uh, the screen obviously is not tiltable. I think there's a, an upgrade like by a third party that you can tilt the screen. But as of now, like if you're buying it, you can't tilt the screen, and that is um, definitely something that would be nice to have. But having a five-inch screen is um, fantastic. And then you know all the other pluses of um, what the 4K provides. The um, the menu system is really simple. Um, I think that you know the access ports are excellent. Um, overall, it's a great camera. It doesn't have um, again the uh, the continuous autofocus that other cameras have. So you know if you're you know, if if it had that, I think, wow, it'd just be like an extra bonus. But you know, I, I could see myself mounting this on a, um, you know, a uh, gimbal and um, getting a, you know, having the focus wheel, and you know, focusing it. But, you know, because as usual, I, I think if you're if you're shooting, um, you know, your short film, you're probably pulling focus anyway, because it's going to be that type of film. Uh, so let's talk about whether you should buy this or not or i think really i think really actually the question is which one are you going to buy are you going to buy the 4k or the 6k so um 
<clears throat> for me, if you have Canon EF lenses, it's a no brainer. You're going to buy the 6K because you just don't want to have to deal with that micro four thirds mount. And then you're getting the extra resolution in the end. It's going to be much more worth it to get the EF mount because it's made for that. And the camera is, it's got a, um, you know, it's capturing a, uh, a nicer image. And so, um, I think that's, a simple no-brainer now the question is obviously if you're just starting from scratch should you get the 4k or the 6k it depends on what you want to do um, I think if you want the flexibility of having micro four-thirds lenses um, then you know I think the 4k will be certainly enough if you want to try different things which I'm looking to do I'll be doing a test with the 6k on something some action footage in my uh, upcoming movie agent 2 I'm adding another action scene and I'll be doing a test if you are just starting out and um, you know you want that flexibility because you're not so great at, great at framing it but later on if you want to frame it late you know in post you're framing it or improving your your ability to frame um, then I think uh, then you know I would get the 6k so there's a lot of reasons to get the 6k but if it really comes down to budget you'll be fine with the you know the pocket 4k you'll be you know in a really good position Again, just remember, like, if you're going to use Canon lenses, though, like, the cost difference is going to be not so much. So it really, um, it really comes down to that type of, um, that type of scenario for you. Uh, how does it compare to other cameras? Um, well, I think, you know, especially since color is uh, very important and you if you're looking to color your footage in a certain way, being able to record in the raw format is um, obviously uh, highly desirable. If not, then you're going to, you should shoot as close to what you want and then like color grade it later. Uh, lighting is hugely important. It really does come down to lighting. I don't care if you're shooting, uh, if you're shooting raw or ProRes or not, the lighting is going to make a huge difference in terms of your ability um, to color and change the, and adjust the footage and, um, and make it look nice. So, um, you know, there's a lot of good options out there, but I think for the price, this is a really good um, entryway into making films. Um, I think that's why they call it the cinema camera because it's one of the smallest compact um, cameras and it uh, it's going to blend really well with the bigger cameras um, that you might use in the future. You know, I think you would get this one and then um, if you're into filmmaking, then you're just going to continue to upgrade, upgrade by getting um, different cameras to suit your arsenal. But this camera will, I think, last you and have its place um, and it won't be as easy for you to say, okay, like I've you know, I've used this camera, I've outgrown it, and uh, just throw it in the rubbish bin. Um, or, um, you know, so I think uh, I think that's the exciting thing about this camera, because you already have so much power and upgradability in the palm of your hands. Um, now, I do want to mention... Um, Alright, so, uh, I hope you enjoyed this review. Um, I am going to uh, further test it in the future, so I hope that you'll stick around and on my YouTube channel and check out what I'm going to do with it. Um, so I'm going to do some tests and then we're going to work with some stunt guys and then I'm going to insert this scene into my film and see how well it blends with um, you know the other camera that I used, the Sony a7 III and R3, uh, which is looking fantastic. And I want to see how this blends with um, all the uh, visual effects. But uh, overall, doing these tests, it looks uh, it looks great, and um, you know I'm looking forward to uh, playing around. All right, so see you next time.